Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now I want to present our ecological sustainable building. Uh, my name is Andreas Klaus Schnetzer, and I and my colleague developed a building which uh, is very ecological and which you can build everywhere. My, uh, my colleague Gregor Bills and me we developed this building in the last few years. Uh, I like to divide the presentation into three parts. First, I will speak about the pellet house system in general. Then I will mention the three possible feeds of applications. And finally, my colleague and me, we will build up a small part of our building. On this picture, you can see the, the main material which we use for our building. The pellet house system in general. Pellets are a standardized means of transportation. They are available worldwide. The size of pellets is perfect for different kinds of transportation, like railway, cars, ship, containers, and trucks. At the end of the life cycle, pellets are usually burned. Thus, it is a global concern to find a follow-up use for them. A follow-up use could be to create the house a so-called pellet house. For building a 60 square meter pellet house, 90 till 800 about uh, reconditioned pellets are needed. The number of pellets you need depends on the function of the building. For a low cost building in a refugee camp, 90 pellets are enough. But for a low energy building, for example in Austria, 800 reconditioned pellets are necessary. The pellet is used as a detachable facet element, ceiling element, wall element, as blind and sunscreen. The space between the pellets takes the beam, the insulation, cables and lighting. To the use of recycled pellets for the basic structure and of cellulose, straw, or sand as insulation, the building is highly ecological and sustainable. The need for other materials is reduced to a minimum. Uh, the simple structure of the building resulting from the sundular size, <coughs> size of the pellets allow different uses. You can adapt the building to the actual conditions because you can change the footprint very easy, that you can see there. It's, it is possible to expand the house in many ways. <coughs> there are different kinds of models, like the inside model, outside model, and the completion model, so that you can create the building you need. The model system allows you to create the building without cutting pellets. Therefore, you have many possibilities to use the house. You can use it as a low-cost building, which doesn't only serve as a vehicle. It can be also used as a refugee camp, for example, or as a house in a slum, too. Now I come to my second point, possible fields of application. The project Pellet House started in the year 2007. As winner of an international student competition in Paris, my colleague Gregor Bills and me, we had the opportunity to show our low energy building at the Architectural Biennale 2008 in Venice. After Venice, the pellet house was exhibited in Vienna in the year 2008. And half a year later, the it was at the cultural capital of Europe in Linz. There you can see a picture from, from Linz, from Upper Austria. At the end of the year 2009, our pellet house was presented at the Overshoot Day, an event organized by the European Economic and Social Committee in Brussels. And now I want to show a short movie about the exhibition in Brussels.
chaque jour, il y a plus d'habitants sur la Terre. Et dans quelques dizaines d'années, eh au lieu d'être 7 milliards, 700 millions, ben on va être 9 milliards. Et il y a toujours une seule Terre. Et on ne pourra pas éternellement continuer à vouloir plus, à consommer plus, parce que ça ne va pas marcher. Si on réduit la consommation d'énergie en faisant un des économies et deux en changeant petit à petit la façon dont on produit l'énergie, eh bien on va être capable, un, de limiter l'utilisation des ressources naturelles, ce qui est important pour le futur, et deux, et ça c'est très important, on va surtout créer une nouvelle dynamique économique et sociale. L'Overshoot Day, c'est théoriquement le jour où nos sociétés humaines consomment plus de ressources que ce que la planète peut nous donner. In 2009, it's taken 267 days for the whole of humanity to consume the entirety of what the Earth has produced in terms of resources since the 1st of January. This date has been christened Overshoot Day. It was calculated by dividing the world's biocapacity by humanity's ecological footprint and then multiplying the result by 365. Over the course of 2009, humanity will have consumed the equivalent of 1.4 planets. If we fail to take swift measures, we'll be consuming the equivalent of two planets by 2050. From the 22nd to the 25th of September 2009, the European Economic and Social Committee organized the Save It event in Brussels, with the aim of raising citizens' awareness regarding the need to reduce their fossil fuel consumption. The focal point of these days was the Pallet House. The concept of this house is that we have a euro palette recycled. That means that we have a euro palette new function of the material. Normally, it is always a transport mechanism. And now we have a new euro palette new function of the material. Andreas Klaus Schnetzer and Gregor Pils are winners of the Gaudi Prize for Architecture. While this house is an extraordinary example of sustainable architecture, it's also a fine demonstration of energy efficiency. The European Union has set itself the target of reducing its annual primary energy consumption by 20% between now and 2020. In order to achieve this, it's essential to reduce energy use in offices and homes. We have built this building because this is the area where the area where now the Brussels is the most popular place in Brussels és szerettük volna fölhívni a figyelmet arra, tulajdonképpen ö, oktatási célnal is, hogy ö, vannak olyan kezdeményezések, amelyet a mindennapi emberek is megvalósíthatnak. While this house is primarily designed to house community facilities in developing countries, it nevertheless offers a demonstration of how energy consumption can be reduced for the least cost. For example, this house consumes no more than 9.5 kilowatt hours per square meter, 10 times less than the average for buildings in our European cities. Quarante per cent des émissions de gaz à effet de serre sont dues euh, au logement. Donc, chacun dans son logement provoque finalement pas mal euh, d'émissions de gaz à effet de serre, de même que le transport privé, l'automobile d'une manière générale. Et donc, rien que sur cette variable-là, 40%, il est possible, avec des petits gestes, avec une attention soutenue, régulière, d'avoir des économies significatives. The European Economic and Social Committee is especially sensitive when it comes to energy issues and has been awarded the Brussels region's Eco-Dynamic Enterprise label with three stars for its own environmental performance. But even without reaching this level of performance, it's still possible to use simple techniques to obtain excellent energy results, as the Pallet House shows. Quindi tutto l'insieme si dimostra una notevole eh, scelta per poter avere una casa molto semplice, poco costosa, che possa mantenere all'interno una temperatura buona. 
è costruito soprattutto con il legno e il legno è un materiale con un'alta capacità di isolamento. Hanno tutta una serie di vuoti d'aria, di intercapedine, dove l'aria rimane, mantiene un microclima e mantiene quindi un isolamento tra l'esterno e l'interno. L'isolamento è estremamente importante perché contribuisce insieme al legno e alle intercapedine a mantenere una temperatura, un microclima costante all'interno della casa. Add to that double glazing and you have a house that's particularly efficient for a minimum cost. These techniques can also be applied to traditional constructions, whether new builds or renovations. Generally, the cost of these systems is estimated at approximately 15% of the building's value for an energy saving of around 50%. So the investment can pay for itself in just a few years. During Energy Week, the European Economic and Social Committee held special energy efficiency days, where the watchword was... Okay, now, now I go on. Today, every sixth person in the world lives in a slum. That means, uh, therefore, <coughs> therefore, it's a very important field of application to use the pellet house as shelter in a slum or township. This year, we started on the Technical University with a research project, Slum Tube, that is financed by the Austrian FFK and BMFIT. The goal was to find a construction system out of pellets and other local materials. Most of the local township people live in shacks made out of corrugated iron. These shacks are not insulated. Therefore, inside it gets very hot in summer and very cold in winter. Together with local workers, we built the first school building made out of pellets in the township of Johannesburg in South Africa. There you can see some picture of the pellet or of the slum tube also made out of pellets. Uh, for, for the whole building, we used uh, really old pellets. On, on this picture, you can see some workers. These are some people from the class there, from the school there. And on this picture, you can see a uh, good man. He was a worker for, from us. And this is good man next to his shop. <laughs> his shop and his shack are made out of corrugated iron. In winter, he is freezing, and in summer, it's very hot in his shack. Before we left South Africa, Goodman has told us that he will collect old pellets for his own building. Maybe now Goodman live in a small pellet house. Goodman has a lot of time to construct his own building out of materials like old pellets, straw and clay. But after a natural disaster like in Pakistan or Haiti, it's very difficult. Yeah, on this picture you can see Haiti and on this following Pakistan. <laughs> the easiest way is to yeah, or for the for the Af Yeah, yes, on this picture you can see all the eight shipments. That means all the, the material is coming on the pellets. Therefore, we considered to find a pellet system which can also be used in refugee camps. The most important thing is that all the necessary materials are available and the construction is a very simple one, which can be built up without, without special machines and without professionals. On this picture, you can see all the materials which are necessary for the main structure of a building of 15 square meters. You need pellets, small wooden pieces and handsaw to cut the wooden pieces. Due to the plug-in plug connection, no screws and nails are necessary. On this picture, you can see all the materials 
Or on this picture, you can see the main structure of the whole building. It means only the pallets and the wooden pieces. And on this building, you can see uh, a static load test. <laughs> After natural disease, it's very important that the refugees get their accommodation, which protects against the rain and wind. The easiest way is to use a foil on top. For example, an old truck foil or a foil from a tent. What you can see there. But later, it's also very important to put insulation material between the pellets. But it's no problem because you have the main structure. Up to now, I spoke about 20 mi minutes, I think. And during this time uh, of 20 minutes, three people can build up a building with 20 square meters. <laughs> For the, for the refugees. That means in one hour you can build a building with 60 square meters. That means you can protect 10 till 15 refugees. Today, pallets are very popular for transportation, but in future maybe the pallets can become a construction element for poor and rich. We built the first building in, uh, in Europe and then the second building in South Africa. And now our goal is to get the possibility maybe to build one for people which really need such buildings. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>